Hello, I'm the Craft Maiden, and in this video, I show you how to make Gnome Chomsky from Troll Hunters. I started with a piece of wood that I drilled some holes to put a wire skeleton in, and holding that in place with tape. To make it easier to sculpt something, I learned that it is to start with a silhouette and work from that. But to save some clay, I filled the whole skeleton with aluminum foil. To cover the body I used Super Sculpey, but if you are going to make one yourself you can always find the materials and tools used in this video down in the description box. When I was happy with the silhouette I marked out where to place the eyes. For eyes I used a pair of glass beads. Something to think about is when sculpting using beads, make sure it stands heat like glass or stone. If it is plastic, it will probably deform or even melt. For the nose, I made a small ball of aluminum foil as filling and a wire to stick it into place. And as I sculpting, I always look in on the silhouette to see that everything looks okay. And if it does, it's time to give Chomsky some shapes. To make his pointy teeth, I used white femur that I rolled into points and flattened out a bit and baked them. As it will be difficult to paint the inside of the mouth, I decided to fill it in with black femur instead. To add the baked teeth, I used liquid femur as an adhesive. That is because unbaked and baked clay has sometimes problems to stick to each other. I wanted to show Chomsky's true self underneath the hat, so by carving a spiral I didn't need to change much of his head shape to create his horn. To make his tiny little hands I pretty much used the same method as I did when making my king's hands brooch, so if you are interested click on the icon in the right corner to watch that video. I used the wire as an anchor and to sculpt his ear from that. To be able to sculpt his legs I needed to take off the base, but I did use it to check on the length every now and then to see if they were the same and to get his feet as flat as possible. Before baking him I added a bit more clay to his neck as a base for his hair. When he cooled down I began with his clothes. As I wanted texture to it I used a piece of fabric that I pressed onto the clay to transfer the pattern. As it's easier to paint over clay in sort of the same color, I used black fimo that I rolled out in a thin sheet and used liquid fimo as an adhesive. To create his boots, I just pressed the fabric onto his pants and just smoothed out the surface where the boots should begin. Then I rolled out a thin piece of clay and added it where the boots should start and smoothed that out to create a border between the two. Then I repeated the same on the arms, but there I also added some creases to mimic fabric. Because it's easier to paint white over white, I used white femur to cover the horn. Before baking him again, I just dragged the fabric in long strokes along the spiral to create some textures. Because I baked him again, I don't need to worry about losing any textures on the arms and legs and the horn as I finish off his jacket. Before baking him again, I added a little tear in his jacket and some stitches with clay. When he cooled down, I gave him a pair of eyebrows. 
I rolled out some thin strands of clay and built up the volume to give him some really bushy brows. But I did also leave some room behind them to fit in some fabric for later on. And before baking him again I made his belt buckle and baked it in the same time. For his belt I rolled out a thin piece of clay that I cut into a straight line and added it all around him. And because the belt buckle is already baked it's easier to get into place. To create the braces I had to cut the strips in smaller pieces and add them one by one. And for the buttons I used small pieces of clay and the ends of some pins. Then I baked him again before adding his beard. To create some hairy textures I used my sculpting tool and a hard brush and went all over the beard. Then I just repeated the same method on his moustache and hair. His hair is quite curly around his ears so I just added some one by one until I was satisfied. Then I baked him one final time before painting him. I'm painting him with acrylics and using pictures from the series as a reference to his colors. And to give some life in the paint I'm just adding highlights and shadows. When painting his skin I started with a lighter pink color that I blended in more red and yellow as I mainly focused on the deeper colors on his nose, cheeks and ears. And trying to fade the paint into each other I get a nice gradient from light to dark. I painted the hair white and added some shadows by using watered down acrylic and wiping off the excess paint so it only would stick to the grooves. For the horn I mainly focused on giving it dimensions by painting it darker at the bottom and lighter at the top all around the spiral and in the light grey paint I added a bit brown for a more bony effect. As I had one of these triangles left over from last year's video when making my Christmas banner I thought I'd use it for his hat. I rounded the bottom a bit and then I pinned it into size before sewing it on my sewing machine. But you can of course sew it by hand if you want to. To hide the seam I just flipped the hat inside out and used a scissor to pop out the top. Then I tested the hat to see if it needed any adjustments. As he was wearing it I didn't like the red color so I decided to paint it. I used acrylic paint instead of textile because it gets stiffer and the ridges from the horn wouldn't show off through the hat. After two layers and drying in between I sew some simple cross stitching all along the seam to give some details to the hat. To secure the ends I just knotted them together and tucked the ends in all along the seam to hide them. And sometimes the needle just stick to the piece so I use a plier to just pull it out. I 
As I also wanted to decorate the stand, I decided to mix together two kinds of white clay to create a gradient in the crystals I'm gonna make. So I'm cutting smaller pieces that I then cut irregularly with my scalpel to create some crystals. I wanted some clusters of crystals, so I bunched up a few, but I also made some singles as well and baked them all. As I wanted to cover the wooden plate, I had to make some research as to bond the clay to the wood, but some used regular white glue and some used baking bond, but I don't have any of that, so I decided to use liquid Fimo instead, and that seems to work pretty well. Then just cut off the excess, poked some holes and pressed down his feet into the clay, as he would stand more straighter if I did so. Then I just covered the sides as well in the same way. Then I just added the baked crystals to the base with liquid Fimo. And then I wanted more textures to the base, so I used a crystal to add some more. And to give more support to the clay crystals, I added a bit more clay underneath and used my sculpting tool to add a bit more texture. Then I baked the base and when it cooled down, I painted some highlights to the edges of the crystals. I had some fine purple glitter that I added to the glossy varnish and painted the crystals with that. To get some dimensions to the texture, I added a really pale blue-gray shading. Before gluing Chomsky to the base, I painted everything with varnish. For the skin and textiles, I used a matte finish and satin varnish for the rest. Except the belt buckle and buttons that I actually used glossy varnish. As my scalpel broke, I used it to add the super glue to his feet. Then I cut off the excess wire, filled in the holes with hot glue, and by placing him on some paper, the glue will cool down flat and there's no need to cut off any excess. To finish off, I glued on a piece of white felt, cut off the excess, and Chomsky is finally done. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you have any suggestions about future ones, comment down below and I might give it a go. So thank you so much for watching, I hope to see you next time and don't forget to like and subscribe for more awesome stuff. Bye!